the star on the top of the Christmas tree because she doesn't really appear properly in, until the end um, and then she just needs to be a little gem on top of the whole ballet because um, the ballet really does grow from the Christmas tree. One in America and one in, in England. I like I like the challenge of the role because it's notoriously very difficult for the girl because the solo is about two and a half minutes long. Um, so your stamina is has to be very, very, very good to, to get through it. There's nothing in the solo that is too technically challenging. You know, it's not like Black Swan. There's not loads of pirouettes, but it's surely the length of it and it's absolutely non-stop for the girl, especially the solo is notoriously very, very, very hard. It's about two and a half minutes, so it's much longer than, than your average classical variation. Um, particularly when on top you must look, you must look bright and glittering and it has to look easy. So trying to make that look easy on top of your heart pounding and sweating and you can't feel your feet by the end is, is what makes it very, very challenging. The special requirements for the role are obviously you need to start building up your fitness and your stamina from the beginning. So before before anyone else in the production was learning a step, um, those of us doing the sugar plum were already rehearsing because it, it really is a huge challenge stamina wise. As far as my tools, um, I need a very, very hard left shoe. So I actually take an entire pair of shoes and those will both be left feet. Then I'll take another pair and one of them is a left foot and one is the right. So I've actually got three left feet because as the boy manipulates you on point, he's spinning you and, and, and walking around you and you're just supposed to be balancing on one toe. That shoe is actually taking most of, of the force and the weight of your body. So the left foot will tend to die much faster. So that's a little trick I've learned. And sometimes I'll do the pas de deux, run off stage, and in the wing I'll put on a more comfortable left shoe for, for the solo, um, where I don't need to be supported quite so long. Uh, this year, my cavalier in the Sugar Plum Pas de is being danced by a very talented young dancer named Dominic Harrison. I'm sharing the role of Sugar Plum with a very talented Spanish dancer named Marie Ledesma. And uh, she's partnered by the ever princely Jake Hale Christoffi. so popular and relevant today I think predominantly because of the music um, from every shopping mall to commercials at Christmas on television you're hearing the score all the time and it's because it's a fantastic score um, Tchaikovsky wrote three of the biggies Swan Lake Sleeping Beauty and Nutcracker and I really think that all three and especially the Nutcracker have endured because of the music There's something about the Sugar Plum Pot of Dough that it isn't just cheery Christmas music. There's some, there's like a, there's a pull underneath that. There's a bit of sadness, even though there's no specific story when you're doing the Sugar Plum Fairy. You know, you're just a character. Um, you're just representing everything that is light and glittering and Christmas and sugary. But still, in that music, there's there's um, there's that pull. Your job as a Sugar Plum Fairy is 100% to just interpret that music um, through dance um, and what wonderful music to, to interpret.